Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to Breast of Research Institute campus. This week is Cholomo Yitzukas, and uh, it's a short week, so we'll give you only a brief uh, talk about Cholomo Rav Nossin has the most interesting approach. It's based on Rabbi Nachman's lesson and the first lesson of the Kutamaran Tinyana, the second part of the Kutamaran. Rabbi Nachman there speaks that uh, a person, in order to be able to earn control of his goal, he has to learn to have power over authority over the angels. Wow. That's a tall order. To have control over angels. Our Rosh Hashiva always used to say, Rabbi Yechayim Rosen, Zuchayin of the Rochum, he would always say, uh, you know, it sounds great, you know, control the angels, you're in charge. Right? He said, but uh, don't forget that uh, the first angel you have to learn to control is the Yetzirah, the evil inclination. He's also an angel. So, uh, you know, when you start thinking about the uh, awesomeness of the project or the goal, uh, start on ground zero. Start on ground level one, right? Let's control our impulses. And Rabbi Nachman there in the lesson speaks about you want to control your impulses. There are three major ones. There's Taivas Neof, Taivas Achida, and Taivas Moment. Taivas Neof is immorality. To be able to uh, control your sexual lust and whatnot, that's one taiva. Second taiva, or desire, lust, is for food. And the third is for money, avarice. Gluttony and avarice. Immorality, gluttony, and avarice. And uh, Rabbi Nachman explains that Pesach, the Passover holiday, is a powerful energy in order to be able to control our avarice, our lust for money. Why is that? Because the Jews, when they were in Egypt, and Hashem told them, you're going to leave with great wealth, right? The Gemara says, by Inatzlu Es Mitzrayim, it says, Baal Korcham. They went against, it says it was against their will. Logically, the verse means that they went against the will of the Egyptians. They took all their money. No. The Gemara says they went against their own will. They didn't want to take the money. Uh, you were enslaved for so many years. You're given a chance at riches and wealth and freedom now. I said, the freedom I'll take, the wealth I'm not interested in. Why is that? The energy of Pesach helps us control the lust of, of for money, avarice. Shavuos is a time of purity. The Jews told you, you're accepting the Torah. Be careful, do not uh, stay with your wives during this time. Assume to accept the Torah, you have to assume a level of purity. And um, Sukkot is meant a time when people excuse me when people would go out to their fields and gather in the harvest and uh, set up all their uh, crops and silos and treasuries and whatnot in order to be able to preserve the food and whatnot Sukkot is called Chag Ho'asif the holiday of gathering so this gathering means we gather in our lust for food, gluttony. We control it. Rav Nosson points out a beautiful, very interesting idea. Pesach and Sukkot have Cholomoyet. Shavu is not. Why is that? Because there are certain things with money that are holy, very holy. You use your money for a mitzvah, to 
buy tzitzis, to buy tefillin, to buy a mezuzah, to buy kosher food. That's like a yantuf. It's sanctified, right? And then you have sanctify it with clothes, with uh, proper meals and whatnot. That's sanctifying the yantuf. But in the middle, you do need the money for your daily needs. You do have it. There is a chol. Chol means weekday. Moed means yom tov, a holiday. So there's a chol and there's a moed. When you observe the holiday of Pesach properly, so that means you have chol ha-moed in between, right? It means that even when you spend your money on permissible items, so that's also sanctified. Like that? Sanctified. So that even your mundane could become sanctified. Sukkot is the same thing. You have the yantif, you have a great yantif, you have ideals and ideas just came off your Shani Yom Kippur. Now you're celebrating with your family and uh, it's really great. It's really fantastic. So you have sanctified eating on one end and you have sanctified meals on the other end. You have the sanctity going all the way. You're always going to have to eat every day, except for your Kippur, your fast, whatever. But you always have to eat. Sometimes you'll eat one way, sometimes another way, and sometimes you eat during the weekdays. The Chol Hamoid, in the middle of the Antif. But know that that eating in Chol Hamoid could also be sanctified. However, when it comes to morality, Shavuos, there is no Chol Hamoid. Because you can't play around with your desires, your sexual desires. You have to be able to control yourself from start to finish. There's no chol, something that can come in. You can do what you want. Yes, it's a Gemara in the Durham. The Gemara says you can do whatever you want, whichever way you want to do it. But you have to know that the act itself is a very sanctified act. And there is no room for a chol for playing in between. Anyway, that's the idea. The message of Chol Moed is that even your mundane things could become sanctified. And may Hashem help us that we learn to focus on Chol Moed. We learn to focus on Chol and the Moed. So know that everything that we do could be sanctified even a simple mundane act. May Hashem bless us with a very happy yantif and a healthy yantif and that we all do the right thing. Amen.